Hello, hello, and welcome back. We are once again in BeamNG and Automation, and you might look at this car and say, Hey, Butch, that's that's not that good looking of a car, and I'd agree with you. That I, I did not spend a whole lot of effort into making this car look good. But I did spend a whole lot of effort in this car, and that is because this is my props car. Now, what are props? Well, props are things in BeamNG that visually move. They don't actually move the nodes, they don't actually move collision triangles, but visually they move. Most people will be familiar with props when it comes to steering wheels. The steering wheel moves whenever you rotate the wheels. Now, automation has made it that you could add descriptions under the statistics tab to be able to implement props. and. There's been a lot of people out there that have shown how to do steering wheels, and I've discussed that in the past, but I wanted to see how far can we push it? What kind of things can we do with this? So, if you see, I have quite a bit of things in here. And, surprisingly, they mostly work. So let's jump back into BeamNG and I'll show you some of the things. So obviously you saw steering wheel. That's basic enough. If we go to interior mode, look down, we have parking brake. Simple, moves back whenever the parking brake is engaged. Similarly on the pedals, throttle, brake, which you can barely see behind the steering wheel. Let me, yeah. And clutch. Oh, there you go. I was right at the right button. But then, not only that, no. Visually, these are getting a little weird, and I'd have to do some node editing to get this to not freak out. But if you look, we have a speedometer that actually goes up and matches. There you go, 30 miles an hour. The, the tack on the right side. 2000 not only that our fuel gauge on the left there we come up into tuning here and we look we're at 20 liters we're halfway if I take that up to 40 liters bam we're full take it down to zero hey guess what we're on empty so we got all of those working as well but not just that you might have caught it out of the corner here I even have the mirrors and side mirrors here. If I turn the car off, they fold in. Start the car back up again, and they open up. We have pop-up headlights. They're not the cleanest looking because this body doesn't lend itself to cleanest looking, but they do exist. And then on the back, we have a spoiler that as we go, we got a little bit of active arrow angling down, and as we slow down, it goes back up. And the dice in the mirror, oh yeah, I'll show you that in a second. The dice in the mirror actually move as well. And if you get yourself into a wreck, you know how the hazards turn on when you wreck a car in BeamNG, and oftentimes in real life? Well, we have our windshield wipers going with the hazards. So I'm gonna give you a little look at the, how I did all this. Obviously it is not cleanly done. If I just turn the hazards on in general, they're still going. If you look, they clip through the windshield. You could spend more effort to clean things up. Some bodies are better than others for this kind of stuff, etc. But I just wanted to give you a taste of what can be done with props. Now, like I said, remember, props only affect the visuals, not the actual, like you can't use it to add another set of steering wheels. It would just be the visuals. It wouldn't actually move any nodes, any collision triangles. So let's jump back over to automation and we'll take a look at how we did some of these things. 
So some of the things are very simple. Steering wheel, it's nice. And I'll have all these down below so you don't have to try to uh, pause and copy. But a simple prop, the number, which 13 is the number for the steering wheel on mine. Steering, tell it to rotate about the Y axis from negative 900 to 900 degrees. One time multiplier. Bam, done, easy. Parking brake is similar except we're rotating about the x-axis because we're rotating it this way and now on some of these other items steering wheel was fine as is for this in this case some of these others what i ended up doing because we only want this part of the uh parking brake to move not the whole thing so what i did is i took the parking brake and I made the base part invisible then I did a clone fixture in place and on the second one I made the base visible but made the top part invisible there that way we have one that is static and one that we use our prop command on the prop number 32 and that way just the handle moves now things like the pedals I just do the whole thing because most of it's hidden anyway but I did use a similar trick here uh, for a few other areas like the active arrow you'll see I did these as one part and that's just this one portion of the fixture and then I cloned it in place and did another one that has all the rest of it with that part invisible so that way I can move just the parts that I want. So if you have a steering wheel that has part of like a big rectangular steer, steering column cover, you can do a similar thing where you just you know copy it, clone it in place, and on one of them have just the wheel so that can move, and on the other have the wheel invisible so everything else is visible but static. Uh, I did a similar thing with the mirrors here. So I have just a rotating part on the top and a static part as a separate fixture in the bottom now for the pop-up headlights and i i wish i knew how to create fixtures to put into beam or into automation and maybe if someone out there knows how to maybe we can uh, work together and figure out how to make this work but there there could be such a simpler way to do this if the right fixture exists. But as far as I'm aware, the right fixture does not exist. So what I did is I did a closed pop-up headlight in 2D. That way it conforms to the body and it looks as it should. Then I cloned it in place, switched it to 3D, and then made it an open headlight. Oh, let me... Uh, click on the right thing here and there we go so it's hidden back in there already open and then I have it to whenever the headlights turn on for this to rotate and it pops through the face now what would be ideal is if someone could make a fixture that snaps like this in 2d looks like this but below has the headlight already open and existing in three dimensions below this and has the origin point along this back edge that way when you rotate it the whole what is currently now a two-dimensional cover here would lift up and expose the headlight that would be absolutely amazing. I don't know how to do that. Hopefully someone out there does. And I think as these prop commands get used more and more often, we'll start seeing more and more fixtures that are made specifically for it. So how do these actually work? I kind of went over briefly, but if you put this in the description section of the statistics, the little tilde, prop colon, the prop number so that is this number up here and it used to be you had to count if there's mirrors and stuff like that they have since fixed that it should work on any new vehicle that you make now 
that that number should be the correct number. And then next you have what is controlling it, you know, what is causing it to move, steering, parking brake input, throttle input, brake input, etc. Now, if you look at the BeamNG documentation, you can see electrics, we have parking brake input, zero to one, we have steering as degrees, uh, throttle input, percentage, all of these things here in the controls, these are all things that can be used to trigger the props. So hazard, flashing function when hazards are on. That's what I used for the uh, windshield wipers to go off whenever we wrecked. Low high beam, it's a zero if they're off, it's a one if low beams or high beams are on. So you do that and then you multiply it by multiplication, I'll show you, uh, to get it to rotate when either low or high beams are on. So there's a whole lot in here. There's your uh, air speed, which is, or air flow speed, that's what I used for my active aero. RPM taco. Um, wheel speed, that's what I used for the speedometer. Uh, all sorts of things in there. And if you go into the vehicle controller, there's other things like engine running, which is a true or a false. And that is actually how I got the mirrors to fold in when the engine is off and fold out when the engine is running. So these can also be used as well. I mean, you can look at the water temp, um, engine speed, oil temp, all sorts of stuff. Here's the fuel percentage of fuel left in the tank. So there's a lot that you can do with all of this. So we have whatever we're controlling. And then we have rotation X, Y, Z, translation X, Y, Z, minimum, maximum, starting, and multiplier. What does that mean? All right. Rotating about the x-axis, that's rotating this way. So for our parking brake, and actually I think it's technically rotating about this way. So our parking brake input, I have it as a negative one so that it actually goes backwards whenever it's pulled. You can see, um, well I guess it also depends on which way the fixture is in there because it's not, it's based about the fixture. So similarly, the gas, brake, and clutch pedals, I have those negative one, but they actually rotate this way when going in. So there is some trial and error depending on the fixtures that you use. Rotate about the y-axis. Y-axis is front to back, so rotating about that, that's your steering. Things that would rotate this way. And then rotating about the z-axis, if we come down to the engine running, that's rotating this way, and that's how I did these mirrors. And you'll see that there's actually two mirrors. That's because it wants to rotate them. If they're just mirrored, it rotates them the same way, which doesn't work when you're mirrored about and you're wanting them to fold inward versus outward. So I actually just cloned this fixture and uh, sent it to flip to the other side. So then I have one of them, or both of them go negative one for that. None of these are, I'm using translation, but translation X, Y, or Z would basically be when this happens, move in the X, so move left to right, move in the Y front to back, move in the Z top to bottom. Um, that's where you would set, put a one, in, one or negative one in those spots if that's what you wanted it to do. Then you have your uh, minimum, maximum, and multiplier. So if you look, steering is probably the simplest. If you steer all the way to the left, you go to negative 900 degrees. All the way to the right, you go to 900 degrees. Now, some things don't have, like they might just be a zero to one input, like the throttle. And I've, this is what I found works for mine. If I go from 
uh, if I go to a 40, you know, negative one to 40 to zero, and a multiplier of 10, it gives me enough visual input without making it hard to control. So once again, I'll put these down below. You will probably want to fine tune them based on whatever your situation is, but hopefully this gives you a good starting point. So then let's uh, zoom in here. So we have our speedometer, tack, and our fuel gauge. You'll see to make my life easier, I started all of the needles at zero or empty. And then we come down here, wheel speed, 270 degrees, because I'm gonna go from there to there and I looked and it's like that, looks like that's 90 degrees. So 270 would be the amount that we have to travel. Uh, on this one, we had to do the negative one to get it to rotate this direction. Like I said, I think that'll be determined based off of the actual uh, prop itself. And then for the multiplier on here, basically you need to look at what units is, what units are you getting out of this and what units are you displaying? So wheel speed is in meters per second uh, we want to go 240 miles an hour at 270 degrees. So I did the math of 240 miles an hour uh, meters per second divided by the 270 degrees. It ends up that it is uh, 0 0.045 uh, degrees per meter per second. So with that multiplier now, whenever it gives the meters per second, it now moves the right number of degrees to get there. Sorry, the 2.52 was for the speedometer. 0 0.045 was for the tachometer, and that was based off of 6,000 RPM tach. Um, once again, doing 270 degrees. For the fuel is I had to, I did some trial and error. It was 90 degrees and 90 um, for uh, this. I think whenever I just had it as one, I think it was only moving one degree. So I think it is just like a 90 to deg a uh, one degree per percentage or for the hundred percent. So multiplied that by 90. And then that way, whenever I'm at full, it is 90 degrees up. Now, I know this is all a bit confusing. Most people, including me, I, I'll i do steering on pretty much every vehicle. And sometimes I'll do pedals, maybe a parking brake. Most of this other stuff I don't usually worry about. But I wanted to see what was possible. Like with the... Uh, with our windshield wipers here. So that's these that are under hazard. So I found that whenever I first had them, they were just going inside the windshield a bunch. What I ended up finding worked was if I clicked on it and I make it 3D, I could rotate where this axis where the, I guess the blue, technically blue axis is. And then I could go back to 2D and it would stay there and then it would rotate between you know, the red to blue along that way about the green axis. So you can do that to kind of fine tune where it is. Now keep in mind, it's gonna keep the same shape that it has here. That shape, unless you have a flat windshield is not gonna match exactly. It's just, a limitation of how the game is but like I said you can cheese things you can make things work good enough and you can even have fun like I did with the uh, dice up here having them move and those actually I set those to move with the uh, with the tack because I wanted them as you shifted 
to look like they kind of swung back forward a little bit. Um, and, you know, there's not that I could find a way to do it just on acceleration. So there you go. Here's a little view of what I came up with. Uh, like I said, I'll put down these prop commands down below. Uh, it is always hilarious whenever you go back and make a change, export it to uh, BeamNG and not realize that you accidentally deleted a fixture and it changed all of your prop command numbers. And then you go to turn and your entire dashboard starts spinning instead of the steering wheel. Always hilarious. Pain to then go back and find. So I do recommend doing this at the very end after you are sure that all of your fixture numbers are not going to change. But yeah, how, what are other ways you think we could use the prop command? I mean, what other things move? I was thinking possibly we can do maybe one of the uh, aerial antennas if we had like an older car and have it rotate back a little bit based off of airspeed. So the faster you go, the more it tilts back. Um, I don't know. What else can you think of? Let me know. Let me know what you uh, think about the ones that I did in here. And let me know if you use any of those uh, commands that I'm going to put down below. I'd love to see what you end up uh, using them for. See if uh, you end up getting a better system than I did for getting the tack and uh, speedometer to work. And see if you come up with anything more creative than my folding mirrors and wonky windshield wipers. That's all I have for you today. Let me know down below what you'd like to see next. And I hope all of you have a wonderful day. Thanks. Peace.